in this part of our video we will be studying about the types of gingiva in detail first is the marginal gingiva about which we have already studied in the previous video but besides that this also forms the soft tissue wall of our gingival sulcus and it is located on the enamel surface approximately 1.5 to 2 mm coronal to the cj now this can be separated from the tooth surface with the help of a periodontal probe there's a term called as gingival zenith which is the most apical point of the marginal gingival scallop and it varies in dimension from a pico coronally to meso distally from 0.06 to 0.96 mm next is gingival sulcus which is a v shaped valley or a space that is present between the tooth and the epithelium of the free gingival margin and it extends apically to the junctional epithelium now the depth of this sulcus is a very important diagnostic parameter and it barely permits the entrance of a probe in an ideal or a normal condition the depth is 0 mm which is seen in only a germ free animals or after intense and prolonged plaque control but in a healthy human gingiva we will found some depth which is our histological depth and it is 1.8 mm but it varies between 0 to 6 mm now how we will determine the depth of our gingival sulcus by inserting a probe and measuring the distance that it penetrates that is our probing depth and the probing depth and the histological depth they vary because of certain factors like probe diameter probing force and the level of inflammation the probing depth in a normally human gingival sulcus it is 2 to 3 mm if it extends beyond 4 millimeters then it is called as a pocket depth which is a pathological manifestation in which there is deepening of the gingival sulcus next is attached gingiva we already know what is an attached gingiva besides that in 40% of the attached gingiva stippling's are seen and the width of the attached gingiva this is a very important clinical parameter as it differs on the facial aspect in different areas of the mouth it is greatest in the incisor region that is 3.5 to 4.5 mm in the maxilla and 3.3 to 3.9 mm in the mandible it is narrower in the posterior segment that is 1.9 mm in the maxillary first premolar and 1.8 mm in the mandibular first premolar and the width it increases by the age of 4 years and also in the supra erupted teeth now since we know that the mucogingival junction this remains stationary throughout our adult life so this change in the width is because of the modification in the position of its coronal portion interdental gingiva we know what is an interdental gingiva and its shape now this shape it depends upon three factors first is presence and absence of a contact point between the adjacent teeth secondly the distance between the contact points and the osseous crest and third presence and absence of some degree of recession now the facial and the lingual surfaces are usually tapered and the mesial and the distal surfaces they are just slightly concave and this interdental papilla this is absent in case of a diastema as they are firmly attached to the interdental bone to form a smooth and a rounded surface thank you for watching this video please do like share and subscribe